Well, good morning. Praise God. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. And we're glad that you're joining us here on this Resurrection Sunday. Uh, again, those of you, maybe you just accidentally <laughs> come across this uh, message. My name is Chuck Eveli, and I'm the pastor of Resurrection Life Church in Clarksville, Indiana, and we're glad you're with us today. Now, normally, this would be a live presentation. But uh, as you're watching this on YouTube, we are doing a live service on our parking lot. And uh, so we're, we're, we're having a great time out there in the parking lot as you're watching this. But we want you to at least have something here on uh, Easter morning, uh, hear a message and uh, be ministered to. So it's not going to be a full service we're going to do this morning. Now you can join us tonight. Uh, six o'clock, we'll have our evening service live stream, and you can join us for that, and I'll give you a little bit more information here in just a couple of minutes. But let's read, I want to read to you first of all this morning from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, starting in verse 1. It says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Hallelujah. Jesus is not here. He's risen. Now again, since he's risen in our life, he is here. Amen. So what they were saying, he wasn't in that grave anymore. He wasn't in that graveyard anymore. He was alive and well. And he said, just as he said, you know, I will, I will meet you in, in Galilee, then he's going to do that. Why? Because he's alive. Jesus will meet you wherever you are. Uh, because he is alive. He's not dead. He's not in a grave. You know, they, they're not going to find uh, remains and find DNA or anything like that. Nope, he's not there because he raised from the dead, victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and he is alive and well. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your blessing and for your anointing. We thank you for this powerful day that we honor the resurrection. We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the only one that has raised from the dead, the only, quote, religious leader that has raised from the dead. All of the others died and they're still dead. But Jesus died and on the third day he rose from the dead and he lives forever and he lives in us. Father, we thank you for that and we praise you for it and just ask you to bless this time now. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God will say to us in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen and amen. Praise God. Well, again, we are so glad you've joined us this morning. Pray this uh, be a blessing to you. And uh, uh, Tammy's going to come in just a minute and just to share about offering with you. Uh, but again, let me remind you just very quickly, uh, this uh, evening, 6 o'clock uh, on uh, April the 12th, 2020, again, we will live stream our evening service so you can join us for that. And uh, then Wednesday night at 7 and other things, and we'll talk more about that tonight on the live stream. But uh, also, uh, join us every afternoon, every evening between 6.30 and 7. Now, we're not on live stream doing this, but in your homes, make sure you take a few minutes and uh, just pray. Pray about this thing that's going on, not just the, the virus, the sickness, but all the other stuff that's associated with it. Just pray about that. Pray for God's blessing. Curse the, curse the devil. Curse the coronavirus in Jesus' name. And just believe God that this thing to be over quick and that we can come together again in the house of God. Amen. That we can assemble together as the word tells us to in the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Praise God. And uh, so again, just do what you can and, and agree with us. This thing's over and we can get back in the house of God. Amen. I know we are the house of God. But again, the Bible tells us, the word of God says that as you see that day approaching, we're to assemble together more and more. So let's do that and believe God for that to happen. Amen? Praise God. Again, as Tammy's coming, just let me remind you 
that, uh, you know, you can mail your tithes and offerings. You can uh, drop them by this evening between, uh, uh, at, at 6 o'clock, I'm sorry, at 5 o'clock, between 5 and 5.30. There'll be someone in the parking lot to receive your offering and are going the electronic means that should be on the screen right now, and you can, you can do that. Let me also say thank you, those of you that are helping with what we're calling Operation Appreciation. Uh, again, the gift cards that we're going to be giving to hospital workers and jail workers and whoever else the Lord lays on our heart. Uh, the last count I've got between cards that have been given and money that's been given, we've got enough to give out 217 of those gift cards right now. So that's pretty awesome. And again, we're giving $10 gift cards to either Coffee Crossing or Chick-fil-A. So if you want to buy some cards, you can do that and drop them off or mail them in. Or if you would just like to make a donation toward that, you can still do that. So we sure do love you. God bless you. And uh, again, Tammy's going to get ready to receive our offering, and then I'll be back with a word for you. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has risen from the dead. He's alive inside of us. Oh, hallelujah. What a great day to be alive. What a great day to be alive. I am so thankful that my Lord and Savior lives on the inside of me, and I'm able to be victorious in every area of my life. Um, Today I just wanted to share, because in John 10, 10, which is one of my favorite Bible verses, it says, which is something we are seeing right now, is that the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. That's what's happening in the world right now. The thief has come to try to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Well, that's what I'm speaking over you today, that your life will overflow, that you're able to enjoy life, have an overflowing life. Jesus says as we give, and we are given back to, as we give into his kingdom, we overflow. We continually overflow with good things. So today, as we continue to do that, we're going to give like we've never done before. We're going to give because Jesus is alive. You know, he's already done all the work for us. All we have to do is receive it. Amen? So we just have to give this morning knowing that Jesus is alive. He's not dead. But he is alive, and he's ready to work in your life if you'll allow him to come in. You know, if you don't know our Lord and Savior, today is your day. No better day to get saved than Resurrection Sunday. Amen? But today, as you're ready to give, just realize as you give, you can't outgive God. It's not possible. The more you give, the more you, you get back because God gives you in ways that you never even know how you're receiving it. It comes in all different directions. God always makes a way even where there seems to be no way. He always comes through for his children, and you're one of his children today. Amen? So as you're ready to give, stand up on your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! I'm not for sure. On the screen, it tells you how there's ways that you can give. You can give electronically. You can put it in the mail. You can go to that church center app. There's many different ways that you can give. You can even text it in. But today, let today be the day you start your life with Jesus and you begin it by tithing and giving to your Lord and, and, and Savior. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I don't need that. Hallelujah. Amen. So again, obviously... Uh, we, you know, just the people working right now, we don't have anybody else here in the building with us. So you um, make sure uh, you get your tithes and offerings in. Again, not, not to bless the church. Yeah, we thank you for it. We appreciate it. But uh, the purpose for you tithing and giving so you can be blessed. He that sows uh, uh, sparingly will reap sparingly. He that soweth abundantly shall reap abundantly. And uh, so that's what God wants for you. He wants those windows of heaven opened over your life, and he wants you blessed. Amen? Amen. Well, again, I hope uh, you have your Bibles. If you do, go ahead and grab those. Amen. Isaiah 53 is where we're going to start this morning. Isaiah chapter 53. And uh, let me also just encourage you, if you haven't already, get some communion elements ready before we finish this morning. Uh, we will receive communion and thank God for the blood and the broken body of Jesus. Amen. But we'll do that at the end. Isaiah 53. This morning, I want to preach a message simply entitled, The Resurrection Change. The Resurrection Change. The Resurrection Changes Things. And hopefully, 
you will allow the resurrection of Jesus Christ to change things in your life as well. So, you know, before Jesus could raise from the dead, he had to die. And in the book of Isaiah, and we read this the other night, or at least some of it, the other night on Good Friday. But I want to start in verse 3 of Isaiah 53 and read down to verse 9. Verse 3, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him, and he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Boy, verse 6, doesn't that sound like today? We have turned everyone to his own way. Everybody doing what they want to do. Everybody just believing what they want to believe. But see, there's only one way. Everybody's turned to their own way. But Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the only way. There is no other way. Amen? Verse 7. He, Jesus, was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb or quiet. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. What we see here of course, is a picture of what Jesus went through in his death, but also what Jesus went through before he died. And again, the, the, the ridicule, the rejection, being despised. Uh, again, of course, he was betrayed by Judas. He was denied by Peter. Uh, you know, Judas, one of his disciples. Peter, one of, if not his closest uh, disciple, uh, at least in the top three, Peter, James, and John. And we all know as humans what it is for somebody to betray us. We all know what it is for somebody to deny us or, or to turn their back on us. And we've all had that happen sometime in our life. So Jesus went through that. Jesus went through that scourging at, at the Roman torture post. Jesus went through the humiliation of, of being stripped naked and nailed to a cross as a common thief. And again, Isaiah here, some five to 700 years before Jesus was even born, by the Spirit saw all of this going on. So again, this is a picture of what Jesus went through on the cross and before he even got to the cross. And again, as it says here very plainly, uh, he was wounded for our transgressions, not his. He didn't have any. He was bruised for our iniquities, not his. He didn't have any. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. He never was sick. He didn't need to be healed. Everything Jesus did, he did it for us. And again, if you look at verse 8, it says he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. So for his transgression? No, for our transgression. He paid the price for our sin. Amen. And again, as we said, all of the... The, uh, the, the emotional and spiritual uh, battles that he did in the Garden of Gethsemane, all of the physical uh, things that happened to him on, on what we call Good Friday. And we look, just flip back to uh, Isaiah 52 and look at verse 14. Isaiah 52. Let me get the right place here. Yep. And verse 14. As many were astonished at thee, his visage or his face was so marred more than any man and his form more marred than the sons of men. He said, well, what's that mean? Well, listen how the New Living Translation 
reads, but many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one would scarcely know that he was a man. You know, may, is that why after that scourging, and again, not only was he scourged with that whip, but, you know, it talks about them hitting him with his fist, pulling his beard, spitting on him, you know, all these different things. Is that why when Pilate brought him back out, Pilate literally said, behold the man? In other words, it didn't even look like him anymore. It didn't look like the man that they had seen just a little bit before. You know, basically what Pilate said, well, uh, here's Jesus as if they wouldn't have known if he hadn't have told them. Again, the way the New Living says, his face was so disfigured he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one would scarcely know he was a man. So when they buried Jesus, they took him down from the cross and they buried Jesus, could we safely say he was a bloody, bloody, bruised mess? Jesus was a mess when they buried him in that tomb. You know, I, I wrote down here, mostly unrecognizable. You know, unrecognizable as a human being, let alone, un, you know, let alone recognizable as, oh yeah, that's Jesus, I know him. No, didn't even look like, didn't look like Jesus, but again, as Isaiah said, didn't even look like a human being is how terribly disfigured his face and the rest of his body was. You know, over in the, in the gospel of Mark, and, and you can just listen if you want to, I know most of you know this uh, know this scripture, and let me go the right way here. In uh, Mark chapter 15, <clears throat> Mark 15 and verse 39, uh, at Jesus' death, it says, and when the centurion which stood over against him, or next, the, the centurion that was there at the cross, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly this man was the son of God. Now, this is a centurion. He's been a, a Roman soldier for a long time. He's raised in the ranks. He's, he's in charge of, of at least 100 other soldiers. He's probably seen many, 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 many crucifixions. And yet when Jesus died, the way he looked, the way he cried out, you know, in John it says he cried out, it is finished. The way he cried out and then the way he died, this hardened soldier who probably death didn't mean a whole lot to him said truly this man was the son of God. He said I've never basically what he's saying is I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a man look like this and I've never seen a man die like this. He's more than a man. He has to be the son of God. Well a couple questions or one question for you you know, we said Jesus basically was unrecognizable as a human being. Well, why did he look this way? Well, because all the, the uh, just the physical stuff he went through? No. Let's look at a couple things here. Romans chapter 6. Come on, turn over there with me. Romans chapter 6. <clears throat> and look at verse 23. I know most of you know this because you know the, the old Roman road to salvation. Amen. The Roman road starts in Romans 3 where it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The second stop on the Romans road is verse 23 here in, in Romans 6 where it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So why did Jesus look this way? Well, the wages of sin is death. Uh, Jesus didn't sin, but our sin was placed on him. Our sin came on him. So when Jesus died, he did have sin on his life and in his life. It wasn't his, it was ours, but sin was still there. And, you know, have you ever seen people, I know we have, uh, that they've what we call lived a hard life. They've lived a, a sinful life, you know, drinking and drugging and carousing and, and on, on and on it goes. And they always look a whole lot older than what they really are. 
and you know, people look at them and their you know their face maybe is wrinkled or leathery looking or their hand you know, whatever their teeth look bad I mean whatever it is and people man they've lived a hard life well that's what sin will do to you sin will make you older than what you are Amen. sin the wages of sin is death and then as I said I mentioned this verse just a minute ago over in Second Corinthians. Again, if you uh, look over there real quick, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, talking about God, it said, For God hath made Jesus to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So God put our sin and the curse of sin on Jesus. Now again, go right over the next book, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So Jesus was cursed. Now again, not because of anything he did, but when sin, our sin came on Jesus, then the curse associated with sin also came on Jesus. And I'll give you a little homework assignment. You've got time. Most of you just sitting around the house. Sometime today or, you know, the next day or so, go back to the book of Deuteronomy. Read the whole chapter 28. The first 14 verses deals with the blessing, but from verse 15 to the end of the chapter, it deals with what is associated with the curse. Right. And so Christ hath redeemed us from the curse, being made a curse or the curse for us. Jesus, again, took sin. The curse is a result of sin. So not only did our sin come on him, but all of the curse associated with that sin came on Jesus as well. So all of those diseases and all of that problems and all of that mess that's talked about in Deuteronomy 28, 15 to the end of the chapter, all of that came on Jesus. No wonder he cried, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is a man who never, under, who never uh, well, he understood because he understood everything, but he never experienced sin. He never, ex thank God, he never experienced the, the uh, curse of sin. And now not only is he experiencing the consequences of sin, of a sin, he's, he's experienced the consequences of all sin, of every human that ever lived, was living, or would ever live. God, you must have forsaken me. All of this. So again, why did he look this way when he died? Because sin makes us a mess. Sin makes us a mess. Now let's go to the Gospel of John, chapter 20. The Gospel of John, chapter 20. And uh, this is John's account of Resurrection Sunday. We're going to read quite a few verses here. I'm going to start in verse 1, and we're going to read down through verse 14. John 20, starting in verse 1. The first day of the week, Easter morning, Resurrection Day, cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher, so, or to the tomb. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloths, clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, or they didn't understand the scripture, that Jesus must rise again from the dead. 
Then the disciples went away again into their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. Again, you know, almost like, I can't believe it, he's gone. You know, just look again. Maybe, well, maybe he's still there. And she saw two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain or had been. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto him, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and didn't know. She knew not. She didn't know that it was Jesus. You know, before I get talking about this, we see a similar thing with the two men in Luke 24 that are walking uh, to Emmaus. And Jesus literally came up and started walking with them. And it says in Luke 24, 16, they didn't know him. Now, this was, these were people that, that knew Jesus, but they didn't know him. And, of course, here's Mary. It's Resurrection Sunday. She, of course, at this time, as it says there about the disciples, Peter and John, uh, at this time, they still didn't understand the resurrection of the dead. So at this point, that still didn't mean anything to them. It means something to us. Amen? So it's Resurrection Sunday. The resurrected Jesus comes and is talking to Mary, and she doesn't recognize him. I mean, they're talking face to face. She doesn't recognize him. Why? Because Jesus looks different from the last time she saw him. Amen? Jesus looks different than the last time Mary saw him. Again, you remember, Mary, after they took him from the cross, it says Mary and, and some of the other women went to the tomb saw them put Jesus in the tomb and saw them roll that stone in front of the door. Mary was there. Mary was one of the last people to see him when he was still dead, when he was still a mess. But after the resurrection, he wasn't a mess anymore. Amen. The last remembrance, the last memory she has of Jesus is this bloody pulp of a mess that again Isaiah said you couldn't even tell he was a human being he was so marred so disfigured so so badly beaten and bruised and and just I, we, we can't imagine but now he doesn't look that way anymore why resurrection changes things amen now let's look at the book of Romans chapter 6 again going to read a little bit of scripture here Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 1. <clears throat> Resurrection 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's what a lot of people are teaching today. Oh, let's just continue. Isn't it amazing? Uh, here Paul's writing this over 2,000 years ago or right at 2,000 years ago. And what he's writing then, the people were asking the same thing that people are saying now. You know, should we just, we can continue in sin that grace may abound, but look what he says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? In other words, if we get born again, we shouldn't be wanting to sin. And even if we want to, we're asking God for help not to do it, amen? Verse 3, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. 
For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now let's go back to verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. When I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior, at that moment I am connected to his death. The book of Galatians says in, in chapter 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Amen? Amen? My sin nature is crucified with Christ. But again, Jesus didn't stay dead and neither do we. Read on there in verse 4. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life or in a new life. We are resurrected with Jesus. We are born again. Amen. Amen. After the resurrection, Jesus was different. After the resurrection, Jesus didn't look the same. So much so that Mary didn't even know who he was. The two men walking on the road to Emmaus did not know who he was. Amen. He was different. Well, if we're resurrected with him, guess what? We ought to be different too. Amen. Look over in 2 Corinthians again real quick. I know you were there a little bit ago. But 2 Corinthians again, chapter 5 and verse 17, a verse most of you are familiar with. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. Now, you know, I just saw something here in the margin of my Bible that it's, it's been there the whole time. And I don't know if I've ever seen it before. You understand what I mean by that? Oh, I probably read it, but I've seen it now. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. But in the margin of my Bible, it says, let him be a new creature. In other words, I have a decision to make. I am a new creature. I was dead spiritually. And when I make Jesus Lord of my life, I've made alive spiritually. But now I have a choice to make. Am I going to live according to my live spirit or am I going to make choices still pertaining or based on what my dead flesh wants to do? Because, see, I'm, I died with Christ. Yes. Amen? But now I've been raised together with him. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Why? Because of the resurrection. Not just Jesus' resurrection. That had to happen. Because without his resurrection, I'm still lost and in sin and going to hell. But he did raise from the dead. And when we receive him as our Savior, we die with him and we're raised together with him. Again, we're talking spiritually. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Look at uh, Acts chapter 26. <clears throat> Acts chapter 26 and verse 17. This is, this is what Jesus told Paul to do when he called him into the ministry. Paul is, is remembering what Jesus told him in Acts 26 and 17. Jesus told him to go, delivering thee from the people. Paul, I am delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles in whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus wants us turned from darkness to light. Yes. Jesus wants us turned from sin to salvation. Jesus wants us turned from death unto life. Amen. Jesus wants us changed. Yes. Just as the resurrection changed him. Now, I don't mean changed him that he was bad before and now he's good. Now, I'm just talking about in physical terms for him. Right. He was a total mess when he died. Yes. But the resurrection, when he, when, you know, when he raised from the dead, okay, yes, 
He still had holes in his hands. He still had holes in his feet. He still had a hole in his side. We know that because he had Thomas put his fingers in those holes. But they're not running bloody holes. They're like scars now. Amen? But his face was no longer marred. Oh, he may still have, he may still have scars from that crown of thorns on his head. Probably does. But his face... He doesn't look like an animal. The resurrection changed that. The resurrection took him, uh, a death made him a mess. Sin, not his, but sin made him a mess. Amen? But the resurrection changed him. Could we say, you know, Jesus was born again? Yeah, I'm not talking like we get born again, but he was dead and then he was alive again, so he was born again. And when he was born again, resurrected, he didn't look the same. Amen? You know, it, it reminds me of Moses. And you can turn back there and read it sometime, but in uh, Exodus 34, well, I'm going to read it. I got time. In Exodus 34 and verse 29, of course, Moses uh, had been on the mountain with God for a long time. In verse 29 it says, And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hands, when he came down from the mountain that Moses knew not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. Moses, who's not even born again, had been in the presence of God so much so that the power and the glory of God had gotten on to him to where the, his face literally shined like a light bulb. And in, uh, it talks about how the people couldn't even stand to look at him. The light was so bright. And so he literally would put a, a cover, a scarf, a, a veil over his face so he could talk to them without that light, uh, you know, causing them a problem. Amen. Why did his face shine? Because he spent time with God. Why did Jesus look different? Because of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. And see, here's the thing. If we look and act the same after we say we've been born again, then we're not spending enough time with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. See, I really have not an issue. And again, I'm not to judge if somebody really is born again or not. But when someone gets born again, their want-tos change. What they want to do changes. Why? They've been born again. They've been brought out of darkness and put into light. They've been brought out of death and put into life. They've been brought out of sin and put into salvation. And again, even though we do not become perfect when we get born again, our desire should be to be more like Christ and to be more like Jesus. Real quick, 1 John. Come on, I'm almost finished. The book of 1 John. All the way back to the end of your New Testament. For those of you just learning your Bibles. In 1 John chapter 1, we read these verses starting in verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he, Jesus, is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. <laughs> Have you ever, I mean, it can happen with adults too, because some adults work in jobs that, man, they get, they get filthy. You know, construction workers and uh, people that, uh, excavation, man, they're down in holes digging and whatever, and, man, they can come out, they're covered with mud from head to toe. Plumbers, we don't want to talk about what they sometimes covered with from head to toe. And, uh, you know, man, they're just a mess. And they'll go home, take a shower, wash all that mess off, and come out. You know, I can remember, you know, you used to say this, especially little kids, they'd be so dirty from playing and whatever. And they'd get a bath and they come out and go, is that the same kid? Well, I didn't even recognize you. Ah, what does it say here? If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. When we make Jesus Lord of, of our life, his blood cleanses us from all sin and people all look at us and go, is that the same person? Just like we look at that little, 
little child, you know, after they've been filthy dirty, but they got that bath, and man, now their hair is all combed, and, and they're just shiny, and it's like, wow, you, you don't look like the same person. Why? Something's happened. Something's changed them. If we confess our sin, I'm sorry, verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word's not in us. But now let's understand something here. The sin he's talking about here in, in, in chapter 1 is the sin or the works of the flesh. Again, your flesh does not get born again. Your spirit does. Your flesh still may have habits that need to be dealt with. And that's why when we do something wrong, we don't run from God, we run to God because as a resurrected person, we have that right to come to God and ask for forgiveness. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So chapter 1 is talking about sins of the flesh. But then you go over to chapter 3 and verse 9. It says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. That's talking about our spirit man. The sin nature is gone because we've made Jesus the Lord of our life. Amen? In our flesh, we still mess up. But each time we do, we need to repent and ask God to forgive us and so we can get back doing the right thing again. Amen. But if we're truly born again, Again, what does it say there? We do not commit sin. That's not our desire. That's not, we don't think about how we can sin. We're thinking about how not to sin and how to keep this flesh under control. Amen? Amen. Thinking of Mary Magdalene again as we close this up. Someone that had been very close to Jesus. You know, he had cast seven demons out of her. And she was very grateful and her and other women would, would follow Jesus and his disciples and provide food and, and, and you know, take care of them and, and minister unto them, the Bible tells us. But after his resurrection, this, this person that was very close to Jesus didn't recognize him after his resurrection. After our new birth, after our resurrection, those that have been close to us before we were born again should not recognize us. Amen. They should see a difference. Amen. They should see there's something different. And again, it's something different from the inside out. Yes. Our hairstyle may not change. The clothes we wear may not change unless, you know, it's something we shouldn't be wearing, uh, you know, that doesn't cover up everything. Amen. You know, but, you know, and everything may not change at once, but we're making an effort. And with God's help, we're able to change these things. You know, just think about it. Peter denied Jesus, but he became a preacher. Paul was a persecutor, but he became a mighty preacher. Amen? Some people say they're Christian, but there doesn't appear to be any change. But again, we draw close to God and we allow him to change us. The resurrection causes a change. It causes a change in Jesus. It should cause a change in us. And not just any change, a drastic change. Again, I think of my associate, Brother Steve. In 30 seconds, he went from 14 years of a drug addict and an alcoholic to instantly deliver from drugs and alcohol. And all of those people that knew him, well, they thought he was crazy, but they knew there was a change. He wasn't the same person anymore. It was a drastic change. Amen? Well, maybe you're not a drug addict and an alcoholic. Maybe you're just a gossip. Maybe you're just somebody holding unforgiveness. Amen? You know, and those are, those are no less sin in God's eyes than drug addict and alcoholic. Sin is sin. But the thing is, when we are connected to Jesus' resurrection... Just as there was a drastic change in his physical body, there should be a drastic change in our life. When Jesus was resurrected, the mess was gone. 
When Jesus raised from the dead, he didn't, when he appeared into, to Mary and then to the disciples and all that, he wasn't standing there and blood running everywhere and his face all mangled. No. When he raised from the dead, when he was resurrected, the mess was gone. Amen. When we're born again, when we're resurrected, the mess of this world should be gone. Amen. This is the resurrection change. Praise God. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me there in your homes? Praise God. Maybe, maybe you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Well, you need to. And I want you to. And there's no better day to be born again than Resurrection Sunday. Some of you watching may be saying, Preacher, you, my life is a mess. God's real good at taking messes and turning them into miracles. If you just let him do it. And I want to encourage you to do that today. It's really simple. You see, Jesus did all the hard work. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus took the, the whipping at the post. Jesus went into hell and took the keys of death and hell away from the devil. Jesus did all of the hard stuff that we couldn't do. And all we have to do is receive that into our life. So pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I confess with my mouth Jesus is my Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised him from the dead. And I receive him now. Forgive me of my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it with all of your heart, then you just had your own personal resurrection. And old things have passed away and all things have become new. And if you let Jesus be the Lord of your life, other people are going to notice. And probably some of them are going to say, what has happened to you? I mentioned Brother Steve. I've got other people here in our church that people have said that to. What has happened to you? Because so much of a change. And that's what Jesus will do for you. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer with me, would you let me know somehow? Again, you can comment. Uh, you know, send me a message on Messenger on Facebook. Send us a letter. Uh, again, if this live stream is a blessing to you, let us know. Uh, I mean, we're going to keep doing it because I believe it is blessing people. But, you know, we like to hear testimonies. It just, it encourages us. And we sure would appreciate that. So, again, if you have your communion elements with you, uh, we're going to receive that today. Again, Jesus shed his blood and had his body broken so that our bodies could be healed and made whole, and so that our sins are forgiven and we are made new creatures in Christ. And if you just pray that prayer, then quote legally, if you will, you can receive communion now because you're a child of God. Amen. And so we're excited for you. So I'll give you just a second. If you haven't got it, just grab something. Grab you a little piece of bread, a little piece of cracker or something. Uh, if you got some grape juice or just any kind of juice, we'll, it's good. It'll work. God understands. And let's understand, again, what this represents. The bread represents the broken body of Jesus. His body was broken so ours could be made whole. The cup represents the shed blood of Jesus. Not only are we washed by his blood so we can go to heaven, but his blood protects us from all of the mess that's going on in this world. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. And as often as you eat this, remember me. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says he then took the cup said, this is my blood which is shed for you. Shed for you to get you to heaven. Shed for you to protect you while you're on this earth. Shed for you that you're adopted into the family of God. And as often as you drink this, remember me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I sure pray and hope that this has been a blessing to you. That again, you'll let the resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. You know, the Bible says in, in the book of Romans, I believe it's chapter 8, that if the same spirit 
that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, then he will quicken or make alive your mortal bodies. Meaning what? He'll change you. The Holy Spirit will change you. Hey, if you need a healing in your body right there where you are, just lift both hands to heaven. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your healing power. And I call every person that's watching this program to be healed and to be made whole right now in Jesus' name. See, that's part of what his resurrection does for us too. It brings healing to our physical bodies. Amen. Brings peace to our mind. We'll provide finances for you, Father. I pray, I know people, a lot of people are out of work. I pray you provide for them. Not just through the government, but supernaturally. I ask you to provide for them. In Jesus' name, praise God. Well, again, uh, this is a little different what we're doing this morning for you. Uh, we've been doing our drive-in service. As you're watching this, we're doing our drive-in service uh, and believing God's doing great things there. We will be live streaming this evening. Again, Resurrection Sunday at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. Wherever you are in the world, if you can, join us and uh, at 6 o'clock. And it'll be a full service, praise and worship, the, everything, a regular service. And hopefully you'll join us for that. And we'll have more announcements for you then. Let me just speak a blessing over you. I speak Psalm 91 protection over you in Jesus' name. That no plague, no pestilence, no evil will come near your dwelling. For God's given his angels charge over you to keep you safe in all your ways. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And everything you put your hand to, it prospers. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You're walking in God's favor. You have high expectations. Barrenness has broken off your life and ministry. You're more than conquerors through Jesus who loves you. You're living in abundance in Jesus. All the words God has spoken over you, they're coming to pass. You're strong in your God. You're doing exploits. You're living in God's blessing and increase. You're living in God's restoration. You're living with God's clear vision, and you are living a resurrected life. Call you blessed and I love you. Right there where you are, just say it. I'm blessed. Amen. Praise God. Again, join me tonight. Join all of us tonight at uh, 6 o'clock for another great live stream. We love you. God bless you. Have a powerful resurrection day. And as always, remember, Jesus is Lord.